In this video, I will show you how you can make your own character shoot in 8 different directions in Unity, kind of like Binding of Isaac, and Binding of Isaac again if it was rotated 45 degrees. Before I begin, I apologize for not typing out the code like others do, but if you want me to start fresh so you can follow along, I can make a new video for you. The first thing I did was create a new Unity project in 2D. I created a player object and a player bullet object and added a script for each one. I also moved the bullet object into the prefabs folder that I created. The player object won't move in this video, but I intended to create 8 different sprites to represent the shooting directions. But I have been extremely busy. In my bullet movement script, I create two public static variables that represent the bullet speed on the x-axis and the y-axis. I made them static so I can reference them in the player controller script. I also made a reference to the rigid body so I can use the velocity to move the bullets when they are created in the game. In the player controller script I made a lot more variables. The player bullet prefab variable references the bullet that will be created, the player transform represents the player's transform, duh, and the fire rate is how often the bullets will shoot out. The next two variables are the same number, but the first one is positive and the second one is negative. When you're moving an object in Unity, if you move it right on the x-axis or up on the y-axis, the number increases, and left or down will decrease it. These variables are used to determine the speed of the bullet when it's created. The diagonal fire variable represents how fast the bullet will move if it's moving diagonally. If an object moves the same speed on the x and y axis, they will appear to move faster, and that doesn't seem as realistic. The PBX and PBY variables represent the x value and a y value, and they will choose the direction of the bullets based on which button I press. The next fire variable is related to the fire rate variable, as it also allows the bullet to fire after a certain amount of time. You can see here that I made other functions to represent shooting so I don't clog up my fixed update function. Also, I made a fixed update function here because I noticed that all the bullets will change directions after being fired out in update. To be honest, I'm not exactly sure why this happens, but if anyone knows, please leave a comment about it below. And now for the meat and potatoes of this script. The first function, createPlayerBullet, will instantiate a bullet at the player's position, and it is called in my other functions. The rest of these functions represent the eight different shooting directions. When I was writing this script, I realized that you can only have one block of code that allows a bullet to shoot in any given direction. In fire down left, this includes what happens when I press the down arrow and the left arrow together, or just each of those keys individually. In the first if statement, it's asking for the down arrow press, the if time dot time is greater than next fire, and for the left arrow press. When all three of those things are true, the following block of code will happen. The next fire variable will increase to be greater than time dot time, a bullet will be created at the player, and the bullet's x and y speeds will be equal to pbx and pby. In case you're confused, the time dot time is just a float value that represents the number of seconds since the scene started. So if the next fire equals time dot time plus fire rate, then it will be more than time dot time, but since time dot time is always increasing, there will be a point when it's less. So then a bullet will fire, and next fire will increase again. Does this make any sense? If not, here's a website that will help you. Anyway, this is where we use the left or down or right or up variables. I wanted the bullets to be the same speed, but if I misplace a negative sign, the bullets will move in the wrong direction. Since I know I'm dealing with the left arrow and the down arrow in this function, I just use the left or down variable. The two variables are then multiplied by diagonal fire, which is a number less than 1, so it will create a number that is less than before. The else if statements check for the same things, except there's only one input get key check instead of two. And as I said before, there are a total of eight if and else if statements for each direction. There are a total of four functions, and they are set up pretty much the same way. Fire up left checks for the up arrow and the left arrow, or else it just checks for the up arrow. Fire down right checks for the right arrow and the down arrow, or else it checks for the right arrow. And finally, fire right up right checks for the right arrow and the up arrow. Uh, just ignore the player movement function. Like I said, I've been extremely busy. So in the Unity editor, I make sure all the variables in the inspector were set by dragging the bullet prefabs in the player bullet prefab variable, and I drag the player object into the player transform slot, and I make sure all the numbers were set, and then I hit play to test it. As you can see, 
the bullets fire out at a fixed rate. If I shoot the bullet out in one direction and quickly shoot another direction, the bullets will wait to fire until time.time .time is greater than next fire. If you click at the top right of the inspector, you can change it from normal to debug, and you can see your private variables from here. Well, that's all the time I have for this video, so thanks for watching. Please leave a comment if you would like for me to discuss other things in Unity, or if you still have a problem from this video. But, like I said, there's a great website that will help you with that.